Hey guys, it's your girl Victoria back to you with another review of Married at First Sight season 14 episode 10 called Mighty Mighty Boss and Bonds. So we're going to get right into it. We're starting off with Lindsay. She's having a conversation with her friend Melanie on Zoom or whatever it is. She's explaining that Mark gives her mixed signals because in the beginning when they first got married, he was all in it. They had sex. I think she said the night of in this scene, but later on we find out it was like the next day and he was all good, but then he wants to say he needs to reel back and slow down. So she doesn't know where his head is at. Um, it's been about almost two weeks since they uh, got an intimate since they fucked. Uh, <laughs> but the last time that they, that they did do it, he was a hit and quit type of guy. He didn't even let her get off. He got off and that was it. But yet he seems or says that he's a pleaser. But I guess in that case, he didn't please her. And the friend is just kind of taking it on in like, wow, oh my gosh, that's, that's crazy. You know, he doesn't seem like that type of guy, you know. He, but Lindsay's like, oh, let me tell you, he's that type of guy. So just saying all the stuff that she's not being pleased and, you know, He's moving a little too slow for her, like I said a few seconds ago, giving her mixed signals, so he needs to pick up the pace and get back on her path. But the friend was like, uh, no, you maybe need to just tone it down for a little bit. Lindsay talking about she can't do that, but Lindsay, uh, Mark's your husband, you doing a little too much for him. I don't know how many people have to tell you to tone it down for you to actually tone it down. I don't understand why a lot of these people in this cast, me, the females, I feel like, feel like they're so perfect that they can't change or, you know, accommodate their spouses. Uh, we're going to get to Elijah on in a moment, but it just seems it's my way of the highway with a lot of people on this cast. And this is why you came on the show in the first place. But Lindsay's last words were he needs to hurry up and catch up to her or else she's going to become, you know, before she becomes a Sahara desert. Lindsay, I'm pretty sure you're still getting your rocks off even without having sex with Mark for almost two weeks. You will be fine. We're going to move on to Elijah Juan and Katina. So Dr. Vivian is visiting all the couples that are uh, left on this show for this season uh, to talk with them about their intimacy and whatnot. So you know how she do. She's a sexologist, a sex therapist. So she's a professional. So she says, well, Elijah Juan and Katina... And immediately goes to Elijah Wan with what he needs in a wife and a woman as far as cooking and cleaning. So Elijah Wan tries to defend himself of why he feels that way. Dr. Viviana is like, no, that's not, not, that's not the way. Your way of thinking is very archaic. And in reality, what you're doing to Katina, you're hurting her feelings for the most part. She didn't say that word for word. I'm just paraphrasing. So Katina gets emotional. She's explaining her side of things that she feels that Elijah Wan is kind of beating up on her and just uh, broadcasting her insecurities. I feel, I think I wrote it down, but I just want to, you know, just have this a free-flowing... Okay, whatever. So she's crying. She thinks that she's not good enough for him. And Elijah Wan, before she even said that, Elijah Wan was kind of looking like, oh, gosh, here we go. Like, really, like, are you really crying right now for front of Yes, Elijah Wan, she's crying because of your ass. And the fact that you don't see it in this scene, in this moment, is very... Because when we move on later on and you're getting happy that she's doing the stuff that you like, I feel like that's kind of selfish of you, Elijah Wan. So in this moment when she's crying and literally telling you word for word that she feels like she's not good enough and your reaction and look is just like, I ain't trying to hear nothing this girl got to say, man. What about me? What about my feelings? You can't cook. You can't clean. You're not trying to do none of this for me. That's not what being a wife is. Well, Elijah Wan, what you're doing is not what being a husband is, okay? And Dr. Viviana starts to be like that, tries to tell him about himself, but then she's, I guess as a therapist, I guess that's what they do. She's trying to see where that's coming from. Why is he the way he is? So then... It goes, obviously goes to commercial for dramatic effect, comes back from commercial for from dramatic effect, where Katina was saying that she don't feel good enough and whatnot. 
And he, Elijah Moore says he hears and understands her, but when Dr. Viviana, like I just said, asked him, where's that coming from? Why, how do you feel? Like, explain to her what you feel other than the cooking and cleaning. That's when he starts to get a little emotional and whatnot, saying, you know, I just feel like you're not being vulnerable and open with me. And, you know, we really need that in order to move forward. So, him choking up. He don't really, even really cry. You see his face get a little red, but I'm just like, you're not doing nothing for me. Like, you didn't make me shed a tear or two like Michael did last week. This Elijah one just making me like, okay, when we go... <laughs> When we're going to get to the next scene, because I, I, I'm i over them too at this point. So, uh, he said he cared for Katina and shit. And, you know, he's going to try to give her his all he tries to, but she gives him no reaction and just asks, asks her to open up. And then I see Katina, she looking like she's smirking a little bit. I'm like, so you happy again, Katina? What is this? So, Y'all good now or something? I don't know. But... She's actually going to try and open up. And I'm just like, okay, we're going to go to the next scene? Yeah? Okay, good. So, we got the couples. They're all going to do an activity from Dr. Viviana to talk and stuff about intimacy and whatnot. And uh, Michael and Jasmina, they do the activity to talk. And they explain their embarrassing moments from high school or something. Or an embarrassing moment that they're afraid to speak of. But I guess they're going to speak about right now. So, Jasmina explains... In high school, all the seniors did pranks on the freshmen or the under underclass. So a girl came up to her, made her think she was on her period, make it seem like she was going to walk her to the bathroom and hide the period stain, but moved, removed the jacket to kind of showcase the period stain. But Jasmina didn't even have a period stain. But Jasmina freaked out and, like, sat on the floor. All the kids came around her, pointed at her, and laughed. And I'm like, this sounds like a scene from a TV show or movie. But, you know, I'm not saying it didn't happen to her, but I'm just like, this is very uh, facade-like. But, you know, if that happened to you, uh, Jasmina, I'm sorry. Kids ain't shit. People ain't shit in general. So sorry, but you you mean to. So you, did you take what the kids did and think that was a cool thing to do? So now you just be mean and stuff like that to Michael and shit? I don't know. But uh, Michael... He was called the PP boy. Jasmina's cracking up at this. Michael's like, it's not funny. And I'm just like, listen, Michael, I understand how you feel, bro. Because when I told my husband and my sister-in-law about Corn Dog Day, what happened to me in kinder- kindergarten, and they was laughing, I'm like, that's not funny, man. I'm still tra- I'm still traumatized from Corn Dog Day. That's that's another conversation for another day. But anyway, we talk about them. So, uh, I guess there was one day in class he had to go to the bathroom. The teacher wouldn't let him. He kept saying, I got to go to the bathroom. The teacher was like, you're being disruptive. Please wait till after story time or whatever was going on at that moment. So I guess Michael being petty was like, oh, I'm going to show you, lady. He peed on himself, peed on the floor. All the kids was like, oh, my gosh, you know, getting up on chairs and shit. And, you know, he was called the pee-pee boy since then. And I'm just like, so you played yourself, Michael, by trying to play the teacher. Okay. All right, so uh, that was cute or something, you know, conversations. We move on to Dr. Viviana sitting with Noy and Steve. And they, they said they're still working on, the, on their communication, Noy, okay? We don't walk away from the house over overcooked noodles, okay? Uh, but Noy cries and expresses that she didn't realize how bad she hurt him by getting up and just walking away. And Steve just says that they need to work on doing better with their communication and something has to change. Goes to commercial for dramatic effect, comes back from commercial for dramatic effect. And Noy says what she needs from Steve is a concrete plan on Steve and his employment. Steve talking about, because he seemed a little triggered by that, and saying, you know, well, I cook, I clean, I do stuff around the house. So if I go to work full time, the house is not going to be clean, you know, you're not, are you not going to like not having, are you going to be okay with that? Not having food cooked for you every time you finish work or come home from work and not having the house clean? Like, who's going to clean up the house? And then Noy was like, well, I just feel like that's excuses because we could both put our, do our parts. Steve was like, okay, but I don't really see you doing your part. And I'm just like, yeah, because Steve, because you're doing all the parts while she's at work, like. 
since she's working, you're cleaning and cooking in the house. So how can she really clean and cook in the house and do her part when you're like doing all the parts while she's at work? But if you're working full time, you guys could split that 50-50 amongst yourselves of how you guys going to do the cooking and house cleaning and all that chores and shit. But then Dr. Viviana asks uh, Noi saying, okay, but if you guys have enough funds to the point where he doesn't have to go to work, would you be okay with that? And Noi said no. She didn't say it like that, but she was just like, I wouldn't feel comfortable with that because that's not really what I wanted. And I'm just like, but why are we not talking about is, Steve, do you got the money in your bank account or not to be a stay-at-home uh, husband, hu uh, dad for all eternity? Because I know he does his freelance, so... It's, it really boils down to how much Steve made as freelancing, how much he got, how much money he got saved in his banking account. Like, why is this conversation still yet to be had? I, I don't understand because I feel like once that conversation is had and once Steve makes her feel secure that, listen, we got enough money because he even mentioned, like, have you paid for anything financially or do, have you felt a financial strain since we've been married with me staying home? She said, no, but she doesn't want to get to that point. And I feel like he wants to say it's not going to get to that point, but it's like, how can she be assured, Steve, if you're not telling her, listen, I'm not going to give you the, you know, my bank statement or nothing because right now I don't feel too comfortable or whatever the case is. But I got like 200K stacked up in savings and I'm doing freelancing and my freelancing uh, gigs give me like 10K per gig. I don't know what he, you know, I don't know how the prices for that, for his gigs and stuff. But the way he's seeming so nonchalant about stuff, you seem like you got some money, Steve. And if you do, why can't this be known to uh, Noi so she feels secure in this relationship? I don't understand why is this such a mystery. Because if you don't got it, Steve, then, um, yeah, what we going to do? What we going to do? I don't know. But we going to uh, move on from them. Was there anything else to say? Okay, no. So we move on to Jasmine and Michael. They're sitting down with Dr. Viviana. And they aren't physically intimate. I think me and America can see that for ourselves. And Michael said he's letting Jasmina take the lead. But Jasmina saying, listen, you know, I need mm -hmm. a connection first with someone before we get to that point. And if I don't got that emotional connection, then my, my pussy ain't going to get wet for you. So she didn't really say it to Michael directly, but indirectly, like, you ain't getting me wet, boo-boo, because, like, you're not there with me emotionally on an emotional connection. So Jasmina feels like they're coexisting at this point, and I feel like me and America feel the same way, Jasmina, but y'all not really putting the effort. You put, both of y'all put more effort in bickering and going back and forth than actually trying to stop the big ring to make it work. But that could also be because from what everybody's saying, and I kind of have to agree to, Jasmina ain't feeling like it like that. So they end up bickering back and forth, of course. Who would they be if they didn't bicker back and forth? Uh, Jasmina cutting Michael off, still talking to him like a little damn kid, like one of her, class, uh, her students at school. Um, she feels... Well, they, they was bickering about communication and whose fault it was. Because, you know, Jasmina don't want to take no fault for nothing. And Jasmina saying she feel like she's the one trying and putting forth the effort. And Michael talking about he wants to be closer physically, intimate, all that stuff. And I think Dr. Viviana tries to break it up, but I don't, like... They could stop bickering, but now it's going to create some beef with them for another four or five days. And Michael just says he wants to get better and closer with her. And Jasmine is like, she wants to do that too, but she needs the connection first before they can move past and do this and do that. And it could go further. And when she means further, I feel like she's trying to talk about sex and then she smirks at that. So then Dr. Viviana was like, oh, I see a little smirkation going on. She didn't say that word for it. I'm just paraphrasing. But I'm like, okay, smirkation, whatever. And not they not listen. I'm gonna be surprised if Michael and Jasmine are consummate this marriage within the, like in these two months. Like I would be 
genuinely surprised if they if they have sex. Because at this point, it's just dry fast on her end and flaccid fast on his end. So I don't know what's going to go on with them. But we're going to move on to Mark and Lindsay. They're sitting down with Dr. Viviana. And, you know, of course, Dr. Viviana has to ask how's the intimacy things going and whatnot. Lindsay just, I think Mark was trying to give an answer. But, you know, Lindsay, she likes to cut off people, too. She was like, it's dead. And Mark and Lindsay are both on the same page of when they consummated the marriage. He's not denying that. But he, Mark, Mark, I said Michael, Mark says, okay, you know, I thought it went well. It went good. Lindsay was like, oh, it's okay. It could have been better. And kind of makes little shots and jabs like, mm, you know, I had better sex uh, than what Mark was putting down on day two of marriage. And Dr. Viviana was like, okay, Lindsay, we can try to express ourselves without being rude about it and saying that they both need to work on their trust because she asks them, do they trust each other? Both of them think they trust their spouse, but that their spouse doesn't trust them. So Dr. Viviano was just, okay, just, just got to work on your trust and your intimacy and try not to be so hurtful with your words because low blows are a no-go. And that was it with them. We're going to move on to Jasmine and Michael. They're sitting down on the co- on the couch talking after sitting down with Dr. Viviana, uh, seeing what how they can better work on the relationship. So uh, my I guess Dr. Viviana made mention of them maybe journaling their thoughts and feelings because that's a great exercise. So I guess Michael first tried to make an observation and saying, you know, they both cut each other off or something to that effect. And immediately Jasmine gets defensive. was like, no, just because we only did it like twice doesn't mean you have to say that we kept cutting each other off. And I'm just like, here we, this is, this is exactly what I'll be talking about, Jasmine. Like you just, like, why are you like this? You're very unpleasant to watch on the TV. Like, you're like, girl, no. What is this? Like, I hope Jasmine is watching, not my review, because I don't think, I doubt she watches this, but I hope she's watching herself on TV and just like, dang, like, I'm just, I'm really a bitch. I hope, like, I was really a bitch to Michael. I hope you see that, Jasmine, because this is, at this point, you, you, you. You, you and uh, Alyssa's posse, but y- y'all seem like great friends from from, from what I see. Okay. But, um, you know, she get defensive and shit, and they start bickering back and forth here, too. Because Michael made mention of maybe they need to start journaling. She's like, no, I'm not going to do that, this and that. And then so Michael gets frustrated with her. Then she gets annoyed. She's like, you know, just need a break and she need a second. So she gets up and walks away to stand in the hallway against the the wall pouting and shit. Like, oh my gosh, this is not fair. She didn't say that, but that's just how her body language was saying. So, you know, producer goes to talk to her. She's saying, listen, can we go inside and talk? She's like, no, but he's not listening to me. He's not listening to what I'm trying to say. So, of course, the producer's going to get her to go back and talk to him again. And uh, they sit down. Well, she sits down. I guess they, they don't even hash it out. He They just said each other's part. Michael says, we don't got to do this damn journaling. I was just make that making that as a suggestion. Jasmine was like, well, I don't want to do it. You're not hearing what I'm trying to say. I'm just trying to say we could go about it a different way. So Michael was like, all right, that's fine. I was just trying to figure out how we can move forward and working on our communication. So then Jasmine was like, well, you need to learn how to hear me and listen when I'm trying to say something. I'm just, I'm just like, this this is damn shame. This this is ridiculous. This y'all two grown. We don't need to be do, doing this. Okay, Michael Jasmina, can we call it quiz? Can can Michael say he wants a divorce from Jasmina? Like Chris said, he wanted a divorce from uh, Alyssa's ass and her lips. Can we do that? Because at this point, I, I can't take another episode with them doing petty ass arguments, bickering, shit like this no more. This is stupid. So we're going to move on to Katina's ass. She done set up a uh, movie night for Elijah. And at first, I'm like, oh, snap, she cooking and shit. No, she set up a movie night, so I'm like, okay, whatever. Um, 
Elijah comes in. He's through the roof. This was like the best thing Katina could have ever done for him. You would have thought she made him like a 10-course meal and have the house spotless clean. But the way he walked in was like, wow, this is what I'm talking about. Make it throw in little jabs. It's like, see, wow, you do listen. I'm shocked that she, she pulled this off. And I'm like, nigga, all she did was put popcorn in the fucking microwave for maybe two minutes. Make sure it was extra butter. Put it in a bowl. And had like a candy bar display and a movie on freaking Netflix. The, the really, this is, oh my gosh. But you know what? Fine. Sure. Yeah. Oh my gosh. This is the greatest thing Katina could have ever done. But I'm like, Katina, you know, you're really trying for this man. But is this man really trying for you? I don't know. But he's through the roof. So the fact that he's through the roof, Katina happy and she, she talking about, oh, you know, I got it right this time. And I'm just like, wow, Katina, you're a pick me at this point. You're a pick me. People on Twitter was talking about she giving me pick me vibes. She giving you pick me vibes because she a pick me at this point. Mm -hmm. You, you, you mm -hmm. through the roof because he through the roof, Katina. I get that you be happy when your spouse is happy. Bonus to this point of what he didn't said, and it's like you're really trying your best to just be the best wife for him. But then, I mean, we gonna talk about previews for not even next, next episode. Is it next episode? I don't know. But previews where he done found her doing something on her phone, and they get into argument. Argument. But he threw the roof. And he's just happy and they could watch Netflix because I guess she likes going out, but he don't really like going out. And But yet the strip club is your element, Elijah. We're going to move on to Lindsay. She sets up a Nerf gun fight with Mark. It was cute. They then get the sex basket from Dr. Viviana. And, you know, they open it. Lindsay opening and going through the stuff in the basket like a kid on Christmas morning. Um, uh, Mark is a little apprehensive, but he's willing to try it, even though it's not really up his alley, but he's willing to try anything once, it seems, and you can see Lindsay is definitely in her element. So, Mark looking uncomfortable while they're doing some of the, playing with some of the toys and stuff, and the things that they got in there, putting on the edible garments and shit, and Lindsay laughing like a seal. Mark said it was a dolphin, but I'm like, sounds like a seal to me. Maybe a dolphin and a seal. If they had a baby, that would be Lindsay's laugh. Um, Lindsay takes a Polaroid of Mark, and I'm just, after the end of this scene, I'm just like, why did we spend half of this damn episode of Lindsay and Mark going through every item in the damn basket? Literally, the producer showed us the whole scene. They left out no edits. They didn't edit nothing out. We saw this whole, this thing took 30 to 45 minutes. Not literally, it was probably like 10 minutes. I'm just exaggerating. But that's what it felt like, 30 to 45 minutes on them doing all this shit. Mark taking his shirt off. Okay. And putting on the edible G-string. All right. Moving on. The guys, they go play hockey. Uh, all of them falling on the damn ground. Uh, Michael don't know what the, what the hell he doing. He never been uh, playing. He never went to play hockey before and never been on skates and stuff. So I'm like, you doing better than me, Michael, because the first time I rollerblade at a roller rink, uh, it was tragic. But they sit down to talk afterwards. Steve admits that he told Nori that he loves her. And Mark's saying he gives Lindsay a nine for all the stuff she's been doing for him as far as being there for him and helping him out in his time of need. But as far as communication, it's a six. Elijah Wan says he's doing better this week with Katina. Last week he wasn't really doing good, but this week he's doing better. Michael rates his marriage a seven out of ten. And says he didn't think it would be this difficult. And I'm just like, wow, 7 out of 10, Mike? Really? Wow. That's that's uh, that's higher. You give, it, you give it a C? I'd give it a D minus. D minus, you know. Sometimes you guys have cute moments. 
like joking around, but uh, I, I feel like that's friend mode, not no marriage mode. But all right, that's fine. We go to the girls. They go do aerial yoga. I think that's what it's called. And Lindsay talking about she glad that Alyssa's not around and makes mention of Katina, but saying, you know, she's not going to say nothing and just hope that they can get on better terms. Okay, cool. I don't know why you brought Alyssa up. We, we're trying to forget about Alyssa. Okay, we, we're trying to forget about Alyssa and her lips, okay? Because I know we're going to have to see her during the reunion, so I don't want to talk about her or make mention of her after this until the reunion. Please. So, they talk. Jasmina said she thinks she broke her coochie, and I'm just like, Jasmina, from what I've seen in these scenes, what they showed us, you didn't do a damn thing. You seem like you just sat there while everybody else tried the exercise, and you... You didn't do a damn thing. So I don't know what you're talking about. Your coochie, you, you broke your coochie. Ain't no coochie to be broke. Okay? Your coochie probably stiff from the cow whips that be in there because you be so cold hearted to people and shit. Your own husband, you know, that you met him at you know, first sight. But nonetheless, he being so mean and cold. You know, you didn't break your vagina of your coochie, girl, because you didn't do shit. Uh, Katina, I mean, um, E for effort. I think you wasn't trying to mess up your wig, even though it was kind of pulling up a little. It was kind of pull, it was, it, it was it was pulling up a little bit, you know. So you, I know you wasn't trying to get it to fall all the way off, but you know, you at least you tried. Lindsay, she tried. Noi, I don't even remember her in this scene really, but they talk and Noi's just like, uh, what'd she say? What did Noi say? You know, sometimes I be putting in the middle of all these damn notes. Okay, Noi says she misses being chased. Yeah. Oh, no, she misses the chasing of dating. So, Jasmina agrees with her and blames the conflicts all on Michael. And I'm just like, Jasmina, you ain't shit. And hopes that the second month of marriage is better than the first. And if the second month of marriage is better than the first, then she will consider saying yes on decision day as long as the uh, marriage is the eight or more out of ten. Jasmina, you ain't shit. Uh, Katina doesn't miss dating. Once again, pick me vibes. Well, they say pick me vibes. I'm not, and there ain't no pick me vibes. Katina's a pick me, okay? At this point. Uh, Lindsay, she misses the chase and being wooed. But she having sex again and having orgasm, so she's all in a good, good right now with Mark until next week when they argue about something else because, you know, it's always up and down with them. So we move on to Lindsay and Mark. They're laying down for bed. Lindsay tells Mark that she needs to be wooed. Mark lets us know in the confessional, like, she will get wooed when the time is right and it will be great. Okay, Mark, whatever you say. We're going to move on to Michael and Trasmina. They go do tantric yoga. You know, it wouldn't be... Married at first sight, if one couple out of the damn cast doesn't go do tantric yoga, and if one couple of the cast don't do the blindfold exercise where one person blindfolds himself and the other person asks them a question. So they do the tantric yoga. I guess it goes well for the most part. They do the blindfold exercise and talk about being more vulnerable. And this is where Jasmina finally admits to Michael, it's not all him. And... You know, yeah, she is guarded and doesn't be vulnerable. And, you know, she's just still learning how to trust Michael and shit. And I'm just like, listen, Jasmine, the fact that you said it wasn't all Michael's fault is a tremendous step up in accountability of your actions. I am so proud of you, but you still got a long way to go, okay? You still got a long way to go, Jasmine. You <laughs> a long way to go. But I guess they get to some type of understanding and agreement and, you know, one thing I will give them, they do know how to, I, mean, I wouldn't even call it flirting, but, like, joke around with each other sometimes. So, I'll give them that. Um, and they just agreed to try to get over this hump that they got on and to move forward. Congratulations. Um, we move on to Steve and Noi. They do a five senses exercise. And... Noi talking about she don't know what a body shot is. And I'm like, Noi, how old are we again? Noi, you know, you just you just seem very, oh my gosh. Really, Noi, you really don't know what a body shot is? You you playing with us? You, you joking? You joking, right? Because you don't know what a body, girl. 
You don't know what body shot is? So I guess noisy don't be getting noisy. Because you really don't know what a body shot is. <sighs> so I guess Steve told her, you know, there's two different type of ways to take body shots. All right, whatever. Yeah, thank you, Steve. Because if it was me, I would just be looking at her like, I'm, what I'm going to need you to do, Noy, is get on your phone and Google that shit. Because I shouldn't be having to explain to you what a body shot is. At this point. I, I shouldn't have to. So... Steve, they talk about fantasies and shit, and Steve's fantasy is washing each other in the shower. Nori looking at him or saying to us in a confessional, like, really? That's that's your fantasy? Listen, Nori, you're going to start off showering each other, right? Then it's going to move on to sexual encounter in the shower, okay? What he trying to tell you, Nori, because it seems like you don't be knowing stuff a little bit because you don't know what body shots is and shit. What he trying to say, he want to have shower sex. That's a fantasy for him, you know, because... Doing outside in the rain could get a little iffy. So the shower is a safe, wet place to do what he want to do, which is have shower sex. Okay? Listen, just because it's not off the wall type of shit doesn't mean it's not a fantasy. That's his fantasy. So what? Okay? Nick want to have shower sex? You start off washing each other, then it gets sensual and stuff, and it gets to, you know, shower sex. No, that completely went over your head. But we get to her fantasy, and she says she wants to have sex in a semi-public place. What is a semi-public place? Like, in a car, in a parking garage? Is that, like, semi-public? Okay, I can look at your old fantasy, no, and be like, okay, boo, lame. No, it's something else sometimes. But, um... Steve talking about he down for that. Now, <laughs> I'm sorry. I laughed when he was just like, he's down for that. And maybe they could try that or whatever when they're on a road trip or walking at a park. And I just laughed because once he said road trip, I, I dialed back to the beginning of the, se of the season when he said he went on a four-month road trip in his car going across the states and the cities and whatnot. And when he also said that, I just went back to when his dad called him a, vag a vagabond. And I'm just like, Steve, you are, uh, what they what people are calling him, a minimalist and a road tripper person at its fullest. You got to squeeze in that road trip because I feel like you not too far from getting on into your car and doing another four month road trip after this whole married at first sight experiment is over so we're gonna see what y'all do on decision day because you might have i don't know you might make make noise take a road trip with you which nothing against road trips but uh i feel like you want to like buy a whole ass rv trailer and just live out of that and just drive around the united states of states of america but after that, they write their fears on a piece of paper. They say their fears to each other. Go on the balcony and burn them with a candle. All right. That's it. With them. We move on to Jasmina and Michael. They're getting ready for bed. Michael's combing his, uh, his beard. Jasmina asks, can she comb it for him? And I guess they lay down to talk. And Jasmina lets us know. That she hasn't really felt a spark with Michael since the wedding day. So now that they're talking and getting over their hump, so to speak. She didn't say that word for it. I'm just paraphrasing. She's starting to feel that tingly sensation of a spark again. Once again, she didn't say that word for it. I'm just paraphrasing. So I'm like, all right, that's cool. What do you think? They making little jokes and shit. And, you know, Jasmine said she's trying. And Michael said, okay, I'm going to need you to try for a week before I can give you a high five. But I guess she tricked him into giving her a high five and that's 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 it with them and lastly we get to this scene with katina elijah one so they finally get their sex basket from dr viviana elijah one is happy it's like oh yeah what was in the basket pull it out pull it out giving me stevie j's vibe stevie j vibes from love and hip hop atlanta so Elijah Wan's shirt come out real quick, but you know the scenes jump back and forth because you know how producers be trying to confuse us and shit. So they get all all this stuff out. 
They have the whips. I think they have a chain. Uh, Katina had a leash. She put it on Elijah Wan. And Elijah Wan tries to massage Katina. Of course, Katina's ticklish, so she's laughing, kicking, hee hee, all that stuff. He he massaging the hell out of her stomach. And he said he thought she was going to be more liking the stomach massage than the back massage because he also massaged her back because he's like, you know, it's getting close, you know, I'm massaging her close to the tutu, so I thought she was going to. She gonna like that better, but I guess she liked the back massage better. Listen, the, the stomach, I mean, it's, it's all right. I don't know, something about the back, man. When you get a back massage, like a good back massage, it is beautiful. Out of this world, man. It is, you know, out of this world. But, so, listen, back massage, I feel like it's better than the stomach massage. More nerve endings back there. Whatever. So, he does all that. Katina does a belly shot on Elijah Wan. Elijah Wan was like, oh, okay. I see she really getting vulnerable with me. She really getting comfortable giving me belly shots. And, you know, she lucky I done took a shower and stuff. I'm like, yeah, Elijah Wan, she lucky. We all lucky because, well, we saw a couple episodes in with that uh, dirty strength, uh, stained draws boxer breeze you know i was kind of nervous when she took that body shot i'm like oh katina you show you, did you did you make sure there was nothing in his belly button before you show girl because them, them stain boxes will forever be an image when i see elijah on without clothes on because i i no but she do the body shot Elijah was ready for this shit and you know, he picking her up because she asked him, like, I want you to pick me up. I like when he pick me up. So he pick her up and stuff. Ass is getting slapped and she, He throw her on the bed and shit. And listen, it, from the way he closed that door, it seemed like it was about to go down. So we're going to find out next week. We're going to find out next week if it, if it goes down. Uh, Like I said, I don't know if it's next week. But when they show the previews of what's going to be happening this season... They're going to be getting into a little riffraff. Elijah, I'm going to find something in her phone. They're going to go back and forth. Katina talking about, oh, the real Katina. Can we take these cameras off of me? We're done shooting. We're done filming for the day because the real Katina about to come out. And I'm like, oh, so who's the real Katina? Because in this episode, it seems like Isaac went back in hibernation and Elijah Wan came back into the forefront. So I feel like Elijah Wan switches between Elijah Wan and Isaac. And now we're finding out Katina, she got a whole nother side to her because she said the real Katina about to come out. So is this, are you showing this throughout this whole 10 episodes? Was this a facade, Katina? I don't know. I guess we're going to have to find out when the episode comes. But thank you guys so much for watching. Let me know what you guys thought because, you know, I know I'm not the only one who feels the way I feel. But thank you for so, for so much for watching. I'll see you guys next week. Bye.